What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you five things that differ between Baldur's Gate 1 and Baldur's Gate 2. Mostly doing this because I thought it would be fun, and I figured maybe people would be curious, so I guess we'll see how this pans out. But that said, we will be steering clear of spoilers, so if you're just curious about these games and you're kind of looking up information, you don't have to worry about me spoiling anything in this particular video. But with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. So first things first, let's talk about strongholds. So strongholds are a feature in Baldur's Gate 2 that is not present in Baldur's Gate 1. Strongholds were a feature of D&D at the time, which was like early 2000s, I believe, for BG2. And strongholds in the tabletop, as well as the game, basically allowed you to perform a function in the world in some way. So, for instance, if you're a fighter, you can take over a hold, and then you sort of act as a local baron solving problems for merchants and things. Whereas a ranger literally takes over a ranger's cabin and kind of protects a local village from various threats, that kind of stuff. So strongholds, again, aren't present in Baldur's Gate 1 at all, and in Baldur's Gate 2, they are class-specific, as you might imagine, because if you're not a ranger, you can't very well get the ranger cabin. Now, you can only have one per character, so if you're multi-classing or something, you don't get to take both potential strongholds, you only get the one. You basically have to choose between them. You will qualify for both of them, and in order to qualify for a stronghold, you have to complete the relevant quest, which is usually fairly long, actually, which then presents you with an option of taking over the stronghold, which you can refuse. And if you're multi-classing, this option will come up at the end of the appropriate quest for both of your main classes. If you're dual-classing, only the current class that you are dual-classing is eligible for it until you pass the point where you would get your previous class back, which might be a little confusing for new players, but if you're new, chances are you're not going to be dual classing anyway, so don't worry about it. In addition to acquiring the stronghold, which usually, again, involves a very cool quest, once you acquire them, you can just kind of take on all this role-playing potential of having the stronghold and managing it. And in addition to that, there is usually a quest line associated with the stronghold, while normally fairly simple, kind of, again, adds to some of the role-playing. But moreover, each stronghold can also produce items for you. Sometimes these are magical items, sometimes it's just like gold. But they do function in other ways besides just questing. Next up, we have side quests. So in Baldur's Gate 1, the side quests outside of the DLCs were fairly rudimentary. They weren't bad by any means, but they were very straightforward. For instance, Somebody will be like, this person's hassling me, go kill them. Or this person's raising the dead, go kill them. There are a few quests that do get more complicated than that, absolutely, but the vast majority of them are very straightforward. And then in Baldur's Gate 2, the quests take on a much more varied nature. And while there are still a few just simple quests here and there, Overall, they're much more complicated. For instance, in the Bridge District, you can solve a serial murderer case. In the slums, you can set a bunch of slaves free and help them take over an inn and take care of themselves. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, because each stronghold that I mentioned earlier actually has a quest that I mentioned to unlock the stronghold. And even if you're not the appropriate class, you'll still get the side quest that would lead you to the stronghold. You just don't take the stronghold at the end of it. And these quests are very in-depth, usually pretty long, actually, like I mentioned, and they honestly feel like little mini-adventures. So the side quests in Baldur's Gate 2 are just much more fleshed out, and while there are a lot of good side quests in BG1, again, they just take a more straightforward approach. Whereas in BG2, there might be twists and turns you didn't see coming, that type of stuff. Now, the third difference I want to talk about is the differences in the world map. So in Baldur's Gate 1, you start outside of Baldur's Gate, and then throughout the game you kind of work your way there. But in addition to that, the function of the world map is just straight up different. So in Baldur's Gate 1, the direction you leave a map from, north, south, east, or west, mattered because that would unlock the next map over from where you are on that world map. So you would kind of explore and learn where things are by literally exploring and exiting a map in certain areas. Whereas in Baldur's Gate 2, you start off in the city of Athkatla, I believe it's pronounced, but basically in the state of Am, which is south of Baldur's Gate. So in that game, you start off in the city, and then various quests will send you outside of the city. However, you won't be able to just explore and travel 
you actually have to learn the location of places before you can go to them. And while overall, not a bad system, personally, I actually prefer Baldur's Gate 1 in this particular instance because I really loved the exploration mechanic of traveling in a direction through maps and unlocking things that way. Whereas in BG2, you kind of have to get the quest to unlock the location and then go there. Now, this wouldn't be any sort of comparison video if I didn't mention the companions. In Baldur's Gate 1, there are literally about 30 companions. All of them are super basic. Their primary function is to serve as a class and an alignment choice for your character to take as party members. Most of them will have a small introductory quest, and that's it. And then you compare that to Baldur's Gate 2, which has quite a bit less companions overall. If I'm not mistaken, it's in the ballpark of like half. However, they are much more fleshed out. Each of them, at the very least, has an introductory quest and a follow-up quest. And in some cases, that follow-up quest actually is multi-layered and has several renditions, so to speak, including multiple outcomes. Moreover, even outside of the enhanced editions, Baldur's Gate 2 actually had a few romances available as well. There wasn't a ton of them. I believe in total it was only like four. So it definitely wasn't a highlight, but it was there. But the Enhanced Edition actually added romances in Baldur's Gate 1 for the new companions that were added to that game. Overall, in Baldur's Gate 2, the companions are much more fleshed out. And this is actually one of the first instances in which we see that famous Bioware romance mechanic that you kind of hear about in those style of games. Personally, don't really care about romances, but having companions with an actual storyline and character progression is much more rewarding. And in Baldur's Gate 1... There's really only a couple of characters that actually kind of interact beyond that initial quest that they give much at all. And lastly, we have one of the biggest differences in gameplay, and that is simply that Baldur's Gate 2 focuses on high-level combat. So I'm going to explain a few things here. In Baldur's Gate 1, the experience cap was 161,000, and in Baldur's Gate 2, the experience cap is 8 million. Now, you'll notice I said experience cap and not level cap because the level is actually based on your class. So in Baldur's Gate 2, most classes will either end up at level 31 or level 40 if they were to actually reach the experience cap, though I will say that is very hard to do without deliberately trying to do it. So in Baldur's Gate 1, that level cap usually ends up around level 7, 8, or 9, kind of depending on the class you're playing. So, as you might imagine, the difference between level 7 and a level 40 character in BG2 is very vast. So, Baldur's Gate 1 tends to focus on lower level combat, which is very kind of melee focused in a lot of ways. However, the spells you get access to, while not great in number, drastically change the combat in that game just because there's so little of spells going on that they tend to kind of dominate when they are cast simply because there's not a lot of counterplay to them because your characters just don't have a lot of options in general in terms of spell casting. Now, if you pick up Baldur's Gate 1, you might be like, there's actually a ton of spells here, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, what I'm talking about is the fact that in Baldur's Gate 2, there is so many more spells than that. So the max level spells you're going to get in Baldur's Gate 1 is like maybe one or two five level spells, level five spells. Whereas in Baldur's Gate 2, you can actually go all the way up to level nine in terms of spell level if you take the time to get there which is going to let you cast all sorts of crazy things. In particular, in combat, you'll see enemies use a lot of these spells as well, because of course they're available, which means having to understand the magic system and what counters what much more in depth than in Baldur's Gate 1. So Baldur's Gate 1's combat tends to be a little bit on the lower level side. Honestly, I do find it pretty rewarding and truthfully just easier to understand what's going on because in Baldur's Gate 2, there's so many spells and because of the interface with which they are presented, it can often be difficult to ascertain exactly what is happening in terms of just looking at like the interface. It can be very confusing because you see all these spell effects going off and there's a million different spells that could be. So you really got to pay very close attention to the combat log and things. But again, Baldur's Gate 2 tends to focus on high level combat, whereas BG1 is lower level combat, of course, because of the level caps. But also that does feel very different. But as always, Knowledge is the name of the game there, and the more you know, the better you're going to do. But there you go, guys. Just kind of a look at a few of the differences between Baldur's Gate 1 and Baldur's Gate 2. In my personal opinion, there are things I like about each one more than the other. 
I like Baldur's Gate 1's world map much more than Baldur's Gate 2. However, I do like the companions in Baldur's Gate 2 a great deal more simply because there's actually something there to like. There you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. We are growing every day. The support has been absolutely tremendous. So truly, thank each and every one of you. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.